Hey viewers, a question that comes up pretty regularly is how to remove a vintage crank set like a square taper or Octolink, Isis, without using a special polar tool. Now, if you look out on the internet, there's a bunch of suggestions on there of how to do it, but most of those are bad ideas. So I'm gonna walk you through some of those various suggestions and explain why they're bad ideas and show you one that I found that I actually think will work. Now, one of the most common suggestions I see is to loosen or remove the bolt or nuts holding the crank arms on and then taking the bike out for a ride. You want to stay close to home when doing this, but as you ride, the arms will slowly loosen up. It might take a half a mile, might take 30 miles, but slowly the arms will loosen up. Now the problem I have with this suggestion is it will ruin the crank arms. As the crank arms slowly loosen up, it'll start to damage the little mating faces inside the crank arm there. So that if you go to remount them, uh, you tighten them up and they'll slowly loosen up over and over and over again. They'll never stay on there tight again. So if you don't care about the crank arms, you're just planning on throwing them away, then this suggestion might work for you. But if you're planning on reusing the crank arms, don't use this suggestion. Now another suggestion I see often is to use a ball joint separator tool, also called a pickle fork. You can see it's like a wedge shape in there and how it would be used is after removing the nut or the bolt holding the crank arm on, you put this in there between the, uh, the bottom bracket and the crank arm and then you use hammer, hammer down and the wedge would go in there and kind of force the crank arm off. Now the problem I have with this is all that pounding is going to do a ton of damage to the bottom bracket, to the bearings and the races inside the, the, uh, the bottom bracket. But also since this uh, wedge is there, it's, it's pushing the uh, crank arm off unevenly and I'm guessing it's probably going to do some damage to the mating faces inside the crank arm. So even though you get the crank arm off, you've basically done damage to the bottom bracket and the crank arm. So the, the operation was a success, but you killed the patient. Another suggestion I see come up uh, pretty often is the brute force method. So after removing the nut or the bolt, you take uh, like a rubber mallet and just start banging on the back side of the arm. Or maybe taking a block of wood, put it in the back of the arm and hammering on that. I don't like this idea. Because again, all these impacts are going into the bottom bracket and potentially causing damage to the bearings and the races in there. And also, since you're hammering on the arm, it's kind of causing it to uh, tilt, it's uneven impact. So you're likely causing damage to the faces on the inside of the arm there, so it may not stay tight in the future. Just not a good idea. Now a variation of the hammering technique is a little bit more surgical. You use something like a flat tip screwdriver, and then after removing the, the bolt, you would uh, be tapping on the back side of the arm in close to the spindle. Now the tapping would be done like in a star pattern. So a few times over here, 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 and keep going around in the star pattern. And since you're so, uh, hitting so close to the center there, you're not going to get that twisting motion. So you're probably not going to damage the inside faces of the arm. You might get some marring around in there. But you're still going to have all those impacts going into the bottom bracket, uh, potentially damaging the bearings and the race in there. So it may not be the greatest idea to do it this way. Now the next method involves using a three-jaw puller. This is typically used in automotive work for pulling gears and pulleys. But uh, I already have a video that details how to use this for uh, pulling a crank. I highly recommend this method is if the threads in the crank arm are stripped out and then you can't use a puller tool. So you can use one of these and typically you could use like a socket to go in there because you need to push against directly against the spindle. So I would use a socket to go in there against the uh, spindle but in this one, this has a bolt coming up, so what I'm going to do is take a nut and just screw this on a little bit loosely so that will kind of hold this little part here so it can pull like, push against the spindle. And then, this is kind of awkward, but you got to get these little hooks underneath the crank arm here. Try to get them to stay there while you're doing the pulling. And then start tightening this part down. And this will pull the crank arm off of the spindle. A 
like that. Now the cons of this uh, particular method is that this tool it can be a little bit pricey and it's more expensive than buying the, the puller. Uh, but it does work and uh, like I said it works great is if the threads in the crank arm are stripped out and you cannot use a puller tool. Now the next methods are destructive. If you really don't care about the arms, you just want to get them off, you can cut them off. Uh, go ahead and remove like the nut or the bolt off of there and then using like a Dremel tool or some other type of uh, cutting instrument, go ahead and cut a slot across here and across there. You maybe use a screwdriver to kind of pry that open a little bit and then the arm will come right off. And that way you can save the bottom bracket. If you want to save the arms but don't care about the bottom bracket, you can use a hacksaw. Go ahead and cut the spindle back behind the arm until it's all the way off. So now you'll have the arm with still the remnant of the spindle in there. Go ahead and remove the nut or the bolt. And now take a vise, like a bench vise. Uh, open the jaws wide enough for the uh, remnant of the spindle to stick down through. Then just take a hammer or punch and just knock the remnant of the spindle out of the arm. And that way you'll have the arms, but you'll have to replace the bottom bracket. Now this next method is actually a variation of the hammer and screwdriver method except we're going to go ahead and support the bottom bracket so it doesn't take the impact. Start off by removing the nut or the bolt. Make sure you pull the washer out if there's a washer in there, like that. Now to support the bottom bracket, protect it from impact when I'm uh, pounding on it, I'm going to be using a bolt. I needed a bolt that's going to fit inside that little square opening of the crank and rest directly against the end of the spindle. And I found a 7 16 inch bolt will work just about perfectly. It'll fit inside that little square opening and right against the end of the spindle. Now if you have like an Octolink type crank and bottom bracket here, um, I was playing around and I found a 3 8 inch uh, hex bolt like this that the end of the bolt will fit inside the opening and rest directly against the end of the bottom bracket just like this. Now if uh, you have, if you're in metric you have to figure out some conversion like that and figure out something that's going to work for you. If you have a bottom bracket that has a bolt kind of sticking out of there with a nut that goes on then you figure something out, maybe uh, put a socket or something over the end of the bolt, but it needs to go against the end of the spindle and not against the inside of the crank arm. But in this case, I'm going to be using this 7 16 inch bolt uh, for this uh, particular crank. So now for my support, I have taken the bolt and mounted it in a vise with the end of it sticking up here like this, and then the spindle is going to rest right on there. Now lay the bike down so that the spindle is resting directly on the bolt in the vise. Now on this particular crank set here, there's not like a good flat area that I can reach in there with a screwdriver. Um, so I'm going to have to kind of pound down around on these little spots. So what I'm going to do is I have like just a big bar here and I'm going to use a uh, rag here to kind of help uh, protect that from uh, getting dinged. And so to set this on here and then tap it with a hammer a little bit and then rotate it around a little bit 180 degrees and then rotate it around a little bit and then rotate it around 180 degrees You want to try to get it off as evenly as possible so that you don't damage the faces inside uh, where it meet, uh, meets up with the uh, spindle. And you still want the impacts in as close to the center as possible. And there, I got the uh, the crank off, and I've helped minimize the, any uh, impacts to the bottom bracket, and I got it off as evenly as possible to help prevent any damage to the faces inside there. 
Now, if all that just seemed like too much work or kind of awkward, you'd always just take your bike to the local bike shop and pay them to pull the cranks for you. Or my recommendation is just buy the tool. You can buy a cheap crank puller off of eBay uh, from China for like five bucks. Uh, they're, they're low quality, but if you spend just a little bit more, like 10, 15 bucks, you could buy a professional quality like Pedro's or Park Tool crank puller that's gonna last you for many years and just do a nice, great job of cleanly pulling your cranks off and you'll be all set. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful or interesting. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to my channel, click that subscribe button and be sure to click that bell so you get notified when I come out with new videos. And I'm over on Facebook, RJ the Bike Guy. Go over there and like that page. I have a lot of fun over there, post a lot of stuff. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching.